Hello, my wonderful, intelligent, intellectual, inquisitive, discerning friends. This is Roger, Mud Fossil University, and these are some mud fossils. Now, I'm going to take a new approach. I originally thought that mainstream science would embrace new knowledge, which is a, CAT scans, DNA, anatomists, chemistry, uh, the biology, the whole thing is 100% certain, no question whatsoever. However, academia will not engage because these are giants, giant human beings, DNA certified, CAT scanned, anatomist, giant finger, and this is just the start of it. <laughs> I have these in copious quantities, and virtually everyone else does too. And they have been dismissed by academia. So we're going to go around academia. Now, what we have to do is to create some ground rules. Right? Because I want to show you what these tissues consist of. You see, this is a bone. You say, well, that can't be a bone. Yes, it is. It's absolutely a bone. That is the outside surface of the bone. It's fractured and crashed. That is the inside where the marrow was. There's some tiny little bits left. All of these little holes are the different channels where uh, the bone was. Now, this is unusual to find bones in mud fossils. They usually transition into literally mud and dirt because this was all a process of the great flood and we are going to include God and Jesus Christ and Mohammed and all of the historical you know players every one of them I don't know which one was right which one was wrong you're going to have to make your own decision on that kind of stuff but I can tell you what the things that were written are supported by the evidence that I will present. 100% supported. Not a single word of the current thinking in geology is correct. Not one syllable is correct. As you will see. And you will see within the next five minutes. And then your life will change if it hasn't already seen, you haven't already seen this stuff. But if, if you haven't seen this in the next five minutes, I guarantee you, your life will be completely changed. Okay, like I say, your life is going to be changed very shortly if it hasn't already. Now, we're gonna, I'm going to retreat back to my website. It's not open yet right now, so don't bother trying to go up here. But I'm going to be showing all the different, different anatomical features and the fabrics and all of the different things that will allow you to identify mud fossils. And because it, it looks like a stone. When I, when I first saw this, I thought nothing of it. I've got to be honest with you. It was a year or more before I realized what I had, and it's a goose. A, a goose or a duck or one of those things. And you can tell... You see the, the feather pattern here? You see the feather pattern in the head? It's a goose or a duck. Now, the texture of the fabric of, of, of all natural fabrics, which, you know, we call them fascia and skin and membranes, and it's, it's really the interface between you and the world. They're almost all the same. Like, this is virtually the same coating as it's the duck's feathers, or the goose's feathers, or whatever it is. But that, that's the, the coating of a bone. And that is almost identical to the um, fascia that is on, hold on, is on, like, this, this lung right here. Now, that lung is, um, is DNA certified. 100% human DNA certified. Now you see the flatness of that lung? You see how flat that is? These were all in the great flood. That's why we have to bring God back into this. Everything that was spoken of 
I can support the giants, the dragons. Let's look at the dragon. All right, that's Africa. All right, that's Europe up there. Now, let's take a look at what is on North Africa. And what I see is a giant fish right there. All right, I don't know if you see it, but I see it. And these are the scales. And that's the giant fish's fin, and that's his tail over here. Now, the head is obscured a bit. However, above that fish, attacking that fish, is this. Spitting out this stuff which has eaten into the fish's back and is very, very nasty and noxious. And not your average stuff that you see laying around. Now, where did that come from? Well, to me, it came from a dragon's throat right out of here. And I have seen and found the injectors, actually. These red and green injectors that are in the throat back here that squirt that stuff in. See where all the toxins are coming out back here? Now, if you follow it down that dragon's throat, all right, follow me down, follow me down, follow me down, follow me down, uh, all the way down. And th this is dragon scales. I mean, if you can't see that, I don't know what to say. Those are dragon scales, and that's the throat. All right. Now, all of this stuff is running off blood and, and, and um, fluids from bodies that are deteriorating. That's what happens. And they're running off into the desert. Now... Right here, this dragon goes all this distance, this entire distance, all the way over to here. And this is the tail over here. I mean, you can see it. if You, you have Google Earth, so you can come up here and look at this yourself. This is the dragon's tail all the way back here. It's not just an accident of dragon scales laying around in the desert. If you follow it straight through, and I have, I have actually watched, and it has a cloaca. Instead, it's an it's a avian creature. And there's the legs. It's almost like a gigantic turkey. And uh, only a little more fierce. <laughs> well, I don't know. Turkeys could be pretty fierce. Now, here's the really interesting thing. You know how I say we got to bring God back into it? Well, this is a, an event talked about. The Leviathan and the dragon. And he will slay the dragon in the sea with his great and mighty sword. Well, how did this dragon die? Well, it appears to me that somebody with a great and mighty sword slashed his throat. And that's where all that blood drained right out into the desert. And then the black part is where the, the, it's oxidized heavily. I remember I said red and black. And that's why you see it all over. It's running off of a dead, decaying body. But the, the throat just keeps going down and down and down. If he hadn't cut it, or whoever was doing it, it would just keep going down and down and down and down. See, all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. This is the throat. All the way down, all the way down. Now, whether this is another cut, I don't know. It looks like it to me. All right, and then it keeps going, and it keeps going, and it keeps going, and it keeps going. And then it runs down into the gut. And this is all the gut down in here. And I mean it is guts. Trust me, I know where guts are. And over here is all of the different branching. There's some kind of an organ over here, whether it's a kidney or a lung or whatnot. I don't know. But, you know, they get some anatomists, get some biologists, get some people that pay some attention to this. It's not, it's not silly. And it was written about. And everything, if this doesn't change your life, I don't know what will. And this was Atlantis over here which is the eye of the Sahara. I have looked at this extremely well. And that was literally an eyeball. You see these things here? That's not an accident. Those are the filaments that pull the eyeball in and out. Look at them. All the way around here. All the way up to the center. You see that? You see these things? 
Not an accident, my friend. The world is an entirely different place than you thought it was. And they said Atlantis sunk, which I believe it did. And when it did, everything drained from the Sahara Ocean, which was all of this here was an ocean. It drained right out here. This broke at the Straits. And when you say, well, what Straits, Roger? Well, this Straits right here. They said it laid outside the Straits. That looks like a Straits to me. Now, and, and, and I know for a fact this is where it, it broke through and drained right out here around the edge of the Straits. It's like the dam failed from the side. And that's where it all ran out through here out into the Atlantic Ocean. And I believe it created the Cape Verde Islands. I believe that's what's out there. And, you know, it's pretty obvious what it did. But, again, geologists missed all this. It missed everything here. None of this is understood. They say that there was an offshore collapse created the problems out here. And obviously, it ran out from the desert. Now, whether they're not looking or they can't see, or I just have no idea. But it's, it's being, well, I can tell you, I do have an idea, and I'm almost absolutely 100% certain of what the idea is. And the reason is, is because this supports the ancient text, the Bible, God, all the things that literally academics hate. If you go in talking about God and Jesus Christ and eternity and all of the religious things that are, need to be talked about, They'll fail you. They'll ruin your life. And they'll treat you like you're a fool. And even though the evidence now exists in copious, voluminous quantities, just what I have, it's so rejected they will not let it be seen. I have the, all these things going back five years. I presented them to Yale and Harvard and everywhere. They, they absolutely refuse to look at them, and they just won't discuss anything. So that's why I'm doing that mock trial. And everything I'm saying is about my opinion. I mean, these, were not, these things that actually happened was I tried to present all this stuff. Absolutely refused. I said, what do I need to do? Oh, you have to have CAT scans, you have to have anatomists, you have to have chemistry, you have to have um, DNA, you have to... They did all that, 100%. They still won't look. So, it, to me, that's a fa failure to act. And that is not their, their um, prerogative. They are fiduciaries to the students and are not acting as fiduciaries in my opinion so that's what it's, everything is my opinion at this point but we're going to treat it like it was a regular trial and see who would win and who would lose it's just you know there's no consequences to anybody but it's just interesting to see how and I, I'm willing, and I've been looking for somebody to, to be the defense lawyer for the academics. I can't find anybody to stand in for them. So I am going to um, treat it just like I would if I was a, a bad lawyer. If I just, all I cared about was winning. So I'm going to destroy me. <laughs> I am going to say, oh, this guy's just, he doesn't know what he's doing, he's just running his mouth, he's got a big ego, and, you know, all he wants to do is start trouble, and, you know, we know what we're doing, and we have peer review, and because I'm going to fight all back against every word of that. You know, so it's going to be Roger against Roger. All right, Roger over. All right, now that is a giant fingertip. That is the fingernail. That's the bone part, and they separate just like that. Like I showed you, or maybe I did or didn't, but this is there's another giant fingertip. Now, this is a fingertip, I believe. This, I think, might be a toenail, but I'm not sure. I mean, a toe. Uh, but they have the grip skin. This one here, the skin is gone. It's eroded away. However, on this one, the fingernail is still there, and the fingerprints. I went and smashed off on the other side. The fingerprints, and here they are right here. You see that? That's the fingerprints. This is where it wrapped around, it wrapped right around the bone, and it came down to the bottom, and that's where the fingerprints are. And these are the actual sweat pores in the, the um, grip skin. Anybody that's an anatomist is going to fully understand this, and I'll show you the grip skin, you'll see it. This is the thickness of the skin 
which is the grip skin and, and, and you'll see that in the anatomical as well now we also do have new species which I call no toes which are the toes the toes are here they're built in it's not a shoe this is a foot and we have the gigantic ones and we have them small but they had a fibia they had a tibia came down right to here and then they had the fibia that went on the side just like our feet do they have an arch to them in the bottom and they um, the, the, it has a regular bone here with a tendon coming up but the rest of it is totally different well we have them in several different styles these no toes and, and uh, Tish Egerton has a selection of them you wouldn't believe and I think I showed you this that's a goose head or something but all of this fabric is going to be the same even this fabric on this no toe when I show you this stuff in a microscope you'll see it's very 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 obvious and you won't be able to make a mistake as to because you have to be able to find the anatomical features like this bone pattern and where the tendons snap in there's going to all of this stuff is now becoming pretty obvious like the fingertips you see this right here that's where the tendons anchor right in this little these little cuts you say oh how do you know that roger how can you how can you be so sure of that maybe it's just chipped away and so here's how i can be so sure of it because i have another one right over here and that black pattern right there i hope you can see it it's, it's so been here so long that i don't know if the pattern's there anymore you can see it but that, there's a black pattern that's what's called the distal phalanges there's the vein there's the artery the arteries blow out on all of these three spots you can see the red blood inside that artery right there that is the distal phalanges and this is the vein side and there's that triangle right there there's the same triangle yeah, it's the same thing and that uh, this was from the same where this one came from and I have the palm from this too three feet wide and there's the blood vessels and so forth. This was CAT scan. You can see where the, all the different blood vessels, you can actually see where the, the fingernail was here in the CAT scan. This is a little bit eroded. That one's not eroded at all. And like I showed you the grip skin here, let's see, look at the anatomical. All right, here's the grip skin. That's this skin. You see this right here? That's, that's all it is, is right here. This is what we're looking at. This is what the layer that we're looking at. And this is the same as this. Let me see if I can get some light on it so you can see it. But, but you can see, see this is the grip skin here. And these little dots are the sweat pores. You see? If you get these things in the right light, you can highlight things and see them pretty good. Now, I can. I don't know if you can. But you saw what I saw here. It wraps over the side, and you don't have grip skin like on the side of your fingers, you know, like you do on the bottom or the toe or whatever it was. I don't know exactly what this was, but it was a finger or a toe. Now, there's the, they're showing the enclosure, the, buff, 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 the, red, the, the, the whole thing, the sweat plan sweat gland ducts and it's what it is what it is it's a gigantic fingertip and it was dna certified here's a dna test all right this is the three mud fossil samples that i had tested i showed you the giant fingertip i i called that the 36 inch tip the mud fingertip which was the middle size one and then the lung and i showed you the lung now all three of them went through this PCR test, very extensive test, and it took a couple of months to, to do it, and they, you know, whatever they do, they do. And it came back positive for human mitochondrial DNA. Two of them were dense, and one of them wasn't quite so dense. Um, these two, uh, the 36-inch tip, which was a big, huge fingertip, and the lung were dense with, he said they were very dense. And, um, because I took it right out of the blood. I took, I know where the arteries are. It wasn't like a guess, like I was swabbing off the surface or anything. So, um, 
and that's that's just what it is. I you know I don't I hesitate. I got to be honest with you. I hesitate to say who the testing people were because they go against them. It really, it's very upsetting. But I guess I'm going to have to show you. I mean, it was Helix Bio Labs. Very 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 well done. I was very impressed, and I'm going to tell you something. I don't impress easily, and they did a fabulous job. And um, also, the people did the CAT scan. Jesse uh, Garant and Associates—they did seven CAT scans for us. Absolutely unequaled, unbelievable equipment. They can do racing car engines and huge machines, and and see right inside, make sure everything's perfect in them. And they could see right inside. They did a whole batch of stuff for me, and uh, I can't thank them enough. Absolutely fabulous. And uh, unless you can, you know, even it doesn't even matter apparently because I showed all this stuff. I showed the DNA reports. I showed the CAT scans. I showed anatomists. Gil Headley's a world famous anatomist. He agrees that these are body parts. He, I hooked up with him because I was originally thought it was fascia which is the coating that surrounds all the organs and everything, because I was finding all these lungs, and I mean, they're all over the place. And, and, and I associated it to the fascia, because that's the coating, and that is the part that seems to preserve what's inside in, in these salt water conditions. So I was going to call it fascia facilitated fossilization, and Gil Headley, who um, is an anatomist, he's, he's an autopsy anatomist. He was the only one that f fully understood it. And even, even him, I, I believe he would say he didn't fully understand it at the time we started talking, because I have the actual fabrics. I have the fabrics. There's no question these are the fabrics. But they have, the, the plasma fluids have removed themselves. I'm telling you, the, the the location that I am in, look at this. This is a lung. That is actual pleura of the lung. That is the flap on the bottom of the lung, which is a heavy, bloody, invested pleura. These are actually the patterns of the lung. I have, this is the depression of the heart. These different colors and these different fabrics are the fabrics that are from inside your body right now but it's floating around in a bunch of fluids and things when the great salt flood happened and I'm sure it was salt waters about the same as the bodies and at any rate the bodies would be part of this solution and their chemistry would be part of that water and I'm sure this was in salty-ish water you know, seven three, seven four, seven zero, oh, somewhere on there, just above neutral, and that would have stabilized these tissues. Then, when the waters flooded away, I believe clean waters washed off all the, you know, soaked out these salty, invasive chemistry, and then it just hardened up solid as a rock. And that's a lung. There is no question. It's been DNA tested, certified, CAT scan, anatomist. No question whatsoever. Human lung. So it's time to start a whole new way of thinking and looking. And I have these in every condition. See, that was a lung. This one's a lung, too. But that lung, you can still see some of the red blood in there. But this one here was in a different it it it, it um, stabilized in a different way because all of the blood and everything this still has all the blood in it this still has all the blood in it you want to see a lung? let me show you something <laughs> where you see this no right, my friend Gary Evans goes out and he sees this muddy rock and he sees a little funny looking thing and he thinks boy that's interesting so he brings it home and he starts to look at it and this is the outside coating of the lung, and that is the inside of a lung. <laughs> and there's a red side and a black side, which is, that's where you treat, the black is, is the vein 
venous blood, which is the depleted blood, no oxygen in there. Well, it's FeO, Fe2O2, whereas Fe2O3 is the oxygenated side. Now, let me show you what happened. Now, this is a different situation than mine. Mine stabilized, which has all the same stuff as this inside here, all the same identical stuff, only mine ended up somehow not getting in a condition like his is because his was in a salt water flat and when he took it out of there obviously you see what you see now let's see what happened to it as it dried out all right so don't forget that's the lung this side would have been the oxygenated oxygenated side it would be red red blood but because it's been soaking in the salt water mud it has invaded the redness of it and turned it into some gray matter. Now the black is the same situation. Normally that's blue in your body when it's in the vein. It turns black in the mud fossils. And obviously these are the, you know, the passageways into the lung and the alveoli. Now again, mine is just totally perfect. But all that stuff is in here. It's all in there. It's all in there. 100%. But it's, mine is solid now, stabilized. Now, why? He, he put the little water on there, and he's looking at it. Because we always hydrate them. I will put water on all my stuff. And it brings the color right out. It brings back the colors and, you know, textures and all kinds of stuff. So I always put water on So he put a little water on He's looking at it. And then about a week later, he sends me this picture. <laughs> this is after a week or two. I don't know, a couple of weeks. It's Now, this is what happens to this one f fared better than his will this that's just going to turn into mud and it, it is turning into mud right now it's just disintegrating it's powdery because it the all of the bonds that make your tissues stick together and form fabrics and so forth they're all broken they've been destroyed by salts because that was in salt for a very long time. Mine, apparently, the only thing I can come up with, and this, I'm still guessing at this point, I don't have all the answers. So I'm not bragging that or I don't know everything about it. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, I know more about it than anybody else in the whole world right now because I've been looking at it and nobody else will look at it. That is the issue. That's the real problem. Now, how this happened, well, I've actually made mud fossils. But not quite to this extent, obviously. I, this this would take some time, I'm sure, so probably quite a few years. But when they soak for for extended amounts of time in the salt, it does, it's done. There's nothing you can do after that. This was probably in for a few years, and then somehow the salts were cleaned out of it. That's all I can come up with. You got anything better? Let me know.